Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be studying about research methodology and biostatistics. So research is the continual search for truth using scientific method. Research includes a problem in need of solution, collection of data as evidence necessary to solve the problem, organization, classification and analysis of the evidence into a logical pattern, use of reasoning as statistical analysis to solve the problem according to the evidence collected and a conclusion or solution to the problem. So, oral health research refers to laboratory, clinical and field investigations that lead to improvement in the control of oral diseases and health care delivery. Purpose of oral health research To promote the oral health of the public by improving education, service, practice and delivery to contribute new knowledge or re-evaluate the current knowledge to improve all the phases of oral health care, to improve the techniques and practices of identifying, preventing and treating oral diseases in individuals and groups, to develop and test theories related to oral health care and oral disease processes, to identify and solve problems, indigenous to advancement, decision making and change in oral health care delivery. Categories of research Basic and applied empirical and theoretical, quantitative and qualitative, conceptual and empirical, and health research triangle. So, basic research here is usually considered to involve a research for knowledge without a definite goal. So here, we do not have a goal. And in applied, the applied research is problem-oriented and is directed towards the solution of an existing problem. It is directed towards the solution of an existing problem empirical and theoretical so empirical means it is based upon observation and experience so health research mainly follows the empirical approach more than the theory okay so quantitative qualitative as the name suggests and conceptual and empirical so conceptual research is that which is related to some abstract idea or theory and it is generally used to develop new concepts or to reinterpret the existing ones. And empirical research relies on experience and observation alone. It is database research which comes up with conclusions capable of being verified by observation or experiment. Now we talk about health research triangle. So yet another way of classifying the health research be it basic or applied, empirical or theoretical, quantitative or qualitative is to describe it under three operational interlinked categories of biomedical research, health service research and behavioral research. So biomedical research deals primarily with basic research involving processes at the cellular level and health services research deals with issues in the environment surrounding man which promote changes in the cellular level. Okay, and behavior research deals with the interaction of man and the environment in a matter reflecting the beliefs, attitudes and practice of the individuals in the society. Scientific method. Scientific method refers to a series of standardized procedures used in research to increase the likelihood that information gathered will be relevant, reliable and unbiased. So scientific method offers an objective, logical, comprehensive, systematic mode of solving problem. Okay, so steps are problem formulation, hypothesis formulation, data collection, analysis and interpretation, writing a report. So in pro problem formulation, identification and statement of a problem in need of solution or question in need of answer is written. Okay, hypothesis formulation formulation of a solution or answer to the question that is observable, measurable and consistent with what is already known in the field. Data collection, collection of facts that can be used to solve the problem, answer the question or test the hypothesis and analysis and interpretation of the meaning of the data collected and writing a report, the final step in the scientific method whose purpose is to communicate the findings of the research. So these steps are cyclic and involves inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. This is not conductive, this is deductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning involves the observation of facts and the organization into a method of explaining phenomena in the real world theory. And deductive reasoning 
is applied to observe and verify the conditions of a theory developed through induction. Problem formulation. A researchable problem is a statement or question that poses an unknown relationship between variables and serves to focus the entire investigation. Idle requirements. A problem must be significant to some aspect of oral health care. If solved, it should contribute to oral health delivery by leading to a new knowledge, confirming or improving current practices or developing new theories. The problem must be observable and capable of measurement through known methods of quantification. The problem should be of interest to the researcher who must be capable of assessing the necessary sources for proper scientific investigation. Hypothesis formulation. Hypotheses are carefully constructed statements about a phenomena in the population. The hypothesis may have been generated by deductive reasoning or based on inductive reasoning. From prior observations, one of the most useful tools of health research is generation of hypotheses which when tested will lead to the identification of the most likely cause of disease. Here or changes in the condition being observed. Although we cannot draw definite conclusions or claim proof using the inductive method, we can come ever close to the truth by knocking down existing hypotheses and replacing them with ones of greater plausibility. So hypotheses are often constructed and tested to identify cause of disease and to explain the distribution of disease in populations. Writing a protocol. A protocol is a document that explicitly states the reasoning behind and structure of a research project. It is a draft summary indicating why and how the study will be undertaken. The preparation of a protocol is most important stage in the research process and is carried out for the following reason. It states the question you want to answer. It states the question you want to answer. It encourages you to plan the project in detail before you start. It allows you to see the total process of a project. It acts as a guide for all the personal involvement in the project. It acts as a reminder to you and your co-workers of the initial structure and aims of the project. It enables you to monitor the progress of the project. It is necessary if you need to apply for funding or ethical approval. So all the protocols are divided into two main sections and these are problem to be investigated and method of investigation. So problem to be investigated has a project title, research problem, background, aims, hypothesis. Method of investigation has plan of the investigation including sample size, calculation and statistical method, project milestones, resources required and dissemination of the result. Project title. The project title is one of the most important features of the protocol because it attracts the attention of the potential reader. It is therefore necessary to make it as short and to the point as possible. If you consider two possible examples, so let's leave the example and move forward. Research problem. Research problems are explanatory devices. They are carefully designed sentences about what you intend to find out. The statements of the problem should be written in a precise and concise form, including the essential points. So when the problem statement is written, the, word, the words must show an understanding of the research phenomena and should explicitly reveal the purpose. Information about the problem should be summarized so that the render reader is not drowned in detail. Go directly to the problem, resist the temptation to give background or set the stage for the problem. When the protocol is read, the reader will want to know the purpose of study immediately. So you should always be in the first person. Statement should always be in first person. For example, in this study, I intend to find out whether Hina Malik is a good girl or not. Background. The most important feature of the background is the pro to the project is that it should be brief and to the point. For a research protocol, the background should be no longer than two pages of A4 paper. In this section, the literature that is relevant to the problem that is to be solved should be concisely reviewed. 
In this respect, it is probably good practice to limit the number of pages quoted to less than 20. When the review is written, attention should be drawn to the good points and the deficiencies of the study quoted. It should also be remembered that if a study has been published in journal, it does not always mean that it's flawless uh, in its methodology and conclusion. Nevertheless, being too critical of previous investigator is also not justified because research technology and understanding of data analysis is a fast moving field. So next one is that it should have a writing flow. So in terms of writing style, it is good practice to make the writing flow. The aims. Aim is an overall statement of the reason for undertaking the study. Example to determine the dental health of a 12 year old state school children with an ABC districts. Objectives. Objectives are the means to achieve the aim. They must be measurable, achievable, statements to achieve the aim, appropriate to the group under study. Differentiation between general and specific objectives. So in general objective, here we see an example of a vaccine. So the general objective of research is what is to be accomplished by the research project and why. Example, to determine whether or not this new vaccine should be incorporated into the public health program. And the specific project are specific objectives are in detail the specific aim of the research project often breaking down what is to be accomplished into smaller logical components in other words specific objective relate to the specific research questions the investigator wants to answer through the proposed study example in evaluating a new vaccine to determine the degree of protection that is attributable to the vaccine in a study population but comparing the vaccinated with the unvaccinated group. Hypothesis. Hypothesis can be defined as a tentative prediction or explanation of the relationship between two or more variables. Hypothesis, in other words, translate the problem statement into a precise, unambiguous prediction of expected outcome. Hypotheses are not meant to be half hazard guesses but should reflect the depth of knowledge, imagination. So. A hypothesis can be as simple in form as predicting the relationship between two variables, one independent and one dependent. So in the process of formulating hypothesis, all the variables relevant to the study should be identified. It is general practice that hypothesis is stated in the null form. So there are two types of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So null hypothesis is there is no difference in the effect of data fat and floor, floor protective varnishes on the dental caries incidence, for example. And the alternate hypothesis is then there is difference in the effect of data fat in the floor protective varnishes on the dental caries incidence. In the next topic, we'll talk about the methods of investigation. Thanks for watching.